Because the family of chimpanzees has learned American Sign Language, we have a chance to hear them speak their minds and to see their desires. Often, they're not very different from our own. Sweet, she's signing sweet, and she has a whole thing of desserts in front of her. <laughs> and she fixed the magazine, sweet that, sweet, 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 sweet that. To really understand humans, we have to, to take others on their terms and look not at the differences, but the similarities as well. Too often we forget that we are human beings and that human is simply an adjective that describes the nature of our beingness. The chimpanzees are really chimpanzee beings and we're, both of us, emotional beings. That's how we form our bonds and our ties. Good evening. Thank you so much for being here to support the scholarly presentation. I'm very excited to be able to talk to you about one of my passions, which is primate conservation. And I want to thank Dr. Alonzo for such a wonderful introduction. Now, I want to kind of start out uh, the evening by um, letting you know that basically I got here a big reason because of that video that you just saw. When I started college, I wanted to be a veterinarian. And I took an anthropology course, and I learned that you could speak with primates like chimpanzees using American Sign Language, and I was hooked. I knew I really wanted to do that. Then I started also hearing some of my colleagues talking about going and doing research in the wild, interacting with wild primates, and I basically have not stopped doing that the past 10 years. Um, as you heard in the introduction, I got my bachelor's and master's in anthropology, and I'm currently working on a PhD in epidemiology, which is disease prevention. And I want to kind of look at the interplay of culture and biology and also comparative genetics in order to prevent diseases in humans and in animals. I am currently an instructor here at COC. I teach physical anthropology, lecture and lab, and cultural anthropology classes. Um, I did get to work with the chimpanzees you saw in the video at the Chimpanzee and Human Communication Institute in Washington. I also worked very closely with the Santa Ana Zoo for many years as their enrichment coordinator. So I basically made activities for um, captive primates to use so that they would stay stimulated. I also got to set up an ecotourist facility in Indonesia. And this is where you can take, um, pay a lot of money to take a vacation in an exotic locale and be able to interact with the wildlife there. And then I did my research in Uganda on chimpanzee conservation programs, and that will be one of the topics we discuss tonight. Now, there are, some, uh, there are some important issues that we're going to cover tonight. Mainly, we're going to talk about something called bushmeat hunting. We're going to talk about why it's so important um, to protect primates from this. We're also going to look at the causes of bushmeat. And most importantly, we're going to end by talking about things that we all can do to help primates and to help conservation efforts. In order to address these issues, however, we're going to start with a brief introduction because many times I find that a lot of people are not quite sure exactly what a primate is. So we're going to look at how to identify primates and then we'll move on to those three aspects. Now, before we begin, I have a question for you guys. And if you've had me before as a student, don't raise your hand because that would be cheating. But I just want to see who in the audience knows about bushmeat hunting or has heard about bushmeat hunting. Good. All right, so um, there's actually quite a lot more than I usually have. Keep this in the back of your mind. We're going to come back to this in a few minutes. First of all, um, I want to introduce basically what primates are to get us all up to speed so that then we can talk about reasons why they are endangered and things that we can do to help. Now, in order to identify a primate, um, these are specialized mammals, and humans are included as primates, and we have unique features to identify us. Number one, we have an emphasis on vision. We don't use our sense of smell or our sense of hearing as other mammals do. We also have five fingers instead of um, different types of digits. We also have nails instead of claws, so that's something that's different between other mammals, such as dogs and cats, and ourselves with primates. 
We also have really good grip. We have precision grip and power grip, and we can manipulate objects. We have a high degree of intelligence, which we will discuss in a moment, and we have high parental investment. What this means is that primate mothers spend a lot of time investing in the quality of their offspring. They want to teach them and make sure they're going to survive, be healthy, and be successful as adults. Here we can see that it doesn't matter what type of primate you are. You can be a prosimian, which we'll discuss in a minute. You could be a monkey, an ape, or a human. We all share these defining features. Five fingers, having nails, and having three-dimensional stereoscopic color vision with depth perception, which is, of course, very important to have if you live in trees. I want to focus for a minute on growth and development of primates because this is very important um, to what we're going to talk about in a few minutes. Now, unlike other mammals, primates don't have litters. We only have one to two offspring at a time, and we have a long time in between offspring. Some apes can take up to eight to 10 years in between each offspring, and this is one reason that they are endangered. The reason that they have such long um, periods in between and such long development is because they are intelligent and complex animals. As you become more intelligent, you tend to need to take longer to learn things. I want to show this to you in a graph. If we go across the top, we have a lemur, a monkey, a gibbon, which is a small ape, a great ape, and a human. These are all different types of primates. But as we go from left to right, we are increasing in intelligence and complexity. And you can see the lifespan is elongated, along with each stage of development. When you look at a chimpanzee and a human, we have one of the longest life expectancies and longest stages of development in the mammal world. Now, as far as taxonomy goes, there's basically two groups of primates. There are prosimians, which are modern living primates, but they resemble primitive ancestors. Lemurs are a good example of these. And we have anthropoids, which are the more human-like primates, monkeys, apes, and ourselves. Now, these are further broken down into a lot of different categories based on features and characteristics, but we're just going to focus on one small group inside the anthropoid division. We're going to look at the great apes. These include chimpanzees, gorillas, bonobos, orangutans, and humans, which I have for you here. A lot of people are unfamiliar with bonobos right here. Bonobos are a closely related species to the chimpanzee. They differ a little bit in their, their body size, in their um, skin coloring and hair texture. They also differ, differ a lot in their social behaviors. And they are critically endangered and are in danger of going extinct um, because of where they live and the pressures that they are facing. Now, I want to talk to you tonight about helping primates, but I need everyone to understand why primates are important. I understand that not everyone has an obsession with primates, as I do, but they are very important to us. Primates are our closest living relatives, and by studying them, we can learn a lot. Specifically, we can learn about the interconnectedness of living things. In anthropology, we stress that actions that, that we have are going to have repercussions in other humans, to other ecosystems, to other species, and so everything has a connection. But we also want to see what does it mean to be human. We're obviously special. We're unique. We have a lot of differences from our closest relative, the chimpanzee. We can also look at primates to see how different animals evolve to different habitats. Humans and other primates live in a very diverse number of climates. We can also look at intelligence, um, knowing sign language, using computers. These are all tests that have been done on chimpanzees and other apes to test their intelligence levels. And we can also use them to try to see how our ancestors may have evolved. Some primates live in the exact type of um, atmospheres that our ancestors lived in. And so we can see the stresses that they face and what they can do to adapt to those. 